Now how perfect is this in the middle of a snowstorm to talk about heated insoles? Now some time back the Weston store reached out to me to see if I would be willing to test the remote control heated insoles. Well I jumped at the opportunity because I spend a lot of time in the tree stand and outdoors in weather just like this. There is nothing that can ruin the fun faster than cold feet. And I'll admit at my age, supplemental heat has become a big part of my hunting hobby and my outdoor life. At my age, I simply don't have the circulation that I would like to have or that I used to have. And so I rely on supplemental heat to keep me outdoors and to keep me having fun. So today, it's my review of the Weston remote control heated insoles. I'll give you my thoughts after actually using these heated insoles. I'll give you the pros and the cons as I see it. So stick around for my review of the Weston Store heated insoles. So I had never had any experience with heated insoles. I have tried a lot of different products. Some have worked fairly well for me, but I was anxious to try these remote control heated soles from Weston Store. I ordered the men's largest size, uh, knowing that I wear a size 10 boot. When the package came, it was nicely packaged and includes both left and right insole, along with a charge cord and a remote control. Now there is some cutting that will need to be done with these insoles, and I was probably most nervous about that. I simply used a good pair of scissors and I used my existing insoles that were inside my boot to lay on top of the Weston Store heated insoles. That gave me an exact pattern to be able to cut around and to know I get the exact right size. Now there are guidelines that are built into this heated sole that you will see uh, that gives you a guideline where you can safely cut uh, without damaging any of the heating elements. After getting these insoles cut to the right size, again, that was the most nervous part for me, I simply fully charged these insoles before first use. The included charge cord is able to charge both insoles at the same time, and once fully charged, I was ready to try them out. Now, as I already mentioned, I spend a lot of time in a tree stand, and there are several things that just inherently uh, cause cold feet. First off, I'm about 20 feet up in the air. I am standing on a metal platform that's cooled both on top and below. The cooled air can come right up against the bottom of my foot along with the top. I'm also standing or sitting rather stationary. And that means I don't have great blood flow or circulation as I'm sitting stationary. And what happens next? Cooled feet. Well, I am pleased to say that these heated insoles worked exactly as advertised. They had three different heat settings, low, medium, and high, and that all can be adjusted with the remote control while the insoles are inside your boot. So I would simply hike to my spot with the insoles turned off, and once I got into my stationary position, or when I felt my feet starting to get cold, note I did not say I waited till my feet were cold, I was proactive and turned these insoles on. Through my testing, I have tried both high, medium, and low settings. Now obviously on the highest setting, you're gonna get the least amount of run time, and on the lowest setting, you're gonna get the longest amount of run time. I was pleased to find out I could run these insoles in both medium or low and still keep my feet comfortable. I found out on the highest setting, although my feet were toasty warm, uh, I simply did not need that much heat, or at least not in the conditions I was in. So I simply ran these insoles the majority of the time on medium or low that extended the life of my battery and kept me warm even on long sits. Now I did do some additional testing with these insoles and for my unofficial test I simply put the insole inside my boot and I put it on the highest setting. I then put an indoor-outdoor thermometer inside my boot and put it on a time lapse just to see how many hours I could get on the highest and hottest setting. I was pleased to see that I reached a maximum temperature of 125 degrees Fahrenheit. Now the duration of this test ran for two and a half hours before of all things my clock stopped working. At that point I was down to 70 degrees Fahrenheit but that was still approximately 15 degree rise or warmth compared to room temperature. 
So I believe on the highest setting, uh, you can reasonably expect to get three, maybe three and a half hours of heat. Now you're not gonna maintain that maximum 125 degrees that entire time, but ultimately just having that supplemental heat against your socks in this cool temperature, it's gonna help you stay warm. So as you can see that a maximum of 125 degrees, uh, that high setting is what I found just not necessary. And it's good news because you can extend your battery life by running them on medium or low. Maybe in your condition, you will want that highest heat setting. It's available with the remote control, high, medium, and low. So what are my final thoughts after actually using these heated insoles in real world conditions? Well, I'll start out with the pros, and that is they worked exactly as advertised. I like the remote control that I could use high, medium, or low at my discretion whenever I wanted to. The insoles worked, and I was able to have warm feet without any other type of boot blanket or hand warmer shoved into my boot. So that is a plus. Now, are there any negatives or something you should note or keep in mind? One of them is their size. Now, although they are ultra thin, they still have built-in batteries and heating elements. The back half of the insole is rather stiff and the front half is flexible where the heating elements are at the bottom of your foot and towards your toes. With the back half of that insole being pretty sturdy because of that built-in battery, it can cause some clearance issues inside your boots. In other words, if your boots are fairly tight to begin with, adding that little bit extra height in there can make your boots feel even tighter. Now for me, my hunting boots, I usually run a tad larger size so that I can wear heavier socks. On certain boots that I tried it with, I had no issues at all, but I did have one particular pair of boots that apparently were a little more snug to begin with. When I added the insole, of course, they became even more snug. So keep that in mind. You're gonna wanna use them with boots that are fairly comfortable or fairly loose to begin with. Now again, this is not dramatic, but you are adding a slight amount of height difference because of that built-in battery uh, with this insole. One other thing that's worth noting, uh, the power button that's on the bottom of the insole, you have the choice to turn it on and to change the settings through the button on the insole without using the remote. That button for me was very hard to access. It is an extremely small button on the very back of the insole. And although it worked and it functioned as it should, it is a small button and my fat fingers uh, found it kind of hard to operate at times. Again, not a huge deal or a deal breaker. Just keep that in mind. The button on the back of the insole to turn it on and off initially is a rather small button. So those were my final thoughts. Uh, the heated insoles worked exactly as advertised. I love them. I like having warm feet. It keeps me outdoors and enjoying myself. So if you have any questions or comments, I'd love to hear from you. I'll try and answer any questions you have. I'll be placing a link down in the description to these heated insoles. It is an affiliate link, so I get a small commission if you do choose to make a purchase. I wanna thank you in advance. It helps my channel out and I can continue to bring reviews just like this one. Well, I'm gonna get in out of this storm. I wanna thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.